Today's video will teach you the most difficult aspect of designing a solar power system. Nowadays, most of the steps required to build a system do not require any math and you can build it like Legos, but with one exception, and that is calculating the solar string voltage. So when you put solar panels together and you connect it to your system, you have to ensure that you put the right amount of panels together so it will not destroy your equipment with a high voltage and that it has a high enough voltage so that the equipment actually works. And buying new equipment is not cheap and rebuilding your system is not easy. So you need to do this right the first time. And I'll have easy calculations for beginners and more advanced use cases. And if you're putting panels together in parallel, this video is not for you, but I have another video that covers all of that as well. So check out the link below if you're putting panels in the parallel. For this video, we're going to calculate the needs of a solar charge controller with a single series string of panels. And that is the most common configuration nowadays. If you're putting your panels into parallel, you're probably not operating at the proper voltage. So let's get started with these calculations. So to make these calculations, you need three things. You need the minimum MPPT voltage for your solar charge controller. You need the maximum MPPT voltage for your solar charge controller. And then you need your solar panels data sheet. And this will have lots of numbers that we can use for our calculations. And in the EG4 6000 XP data sheet, it says that the DC input voltage range for the MPPT is 100 to 480 volts. So 100 volts up here, 480 volts down here. And now we need to connect some solar panels. You can use any solar panel you wish, but for this example, we're gonna use my favorite Aptos solar panels. And I'm gonna click here for the spec sheet. And that will give us the data sheet. And we need a few important numbers off of this sheet. The so first we need the voltage open circuit and that's the VOC and for these panels it's 41.4 and for calculating the string voltage this is the most important metric so you do not destroy your equipment. You can actually ignore the rated voltage because when you connect this panel to a solar charge controller the voltage will actually drop to 34 volts but we need the voltage open circuit to do this calculation. So the VOC is 41.4 volts. Now first we're gonna calculate how many panels we need minimum to satisfy the needs of this controller so it will actually turn itself on. If you give it a voltage that's lower than 100 volts with your solar panels, it will not operate. You'll get little to no power. So you need to put enough of these panels together in series to create a voltage higher than 100 volts. But there's something that you guys need to know. First off, like I said, when you connect your solar panel to a solar charge controller, this will actually drop down to around 35 volts. And even though this is the minimum voltage for the 6000 XP, it actually requires a little bit more, around 120 volts. Furthermore, with the MPPT, you want to boost that voltage as much as possible for when the sun first comes up in the morning and when the sun is setting in the afternoon. So what I'm going to tell you is that this number is bad, even though it's on the data sheet, you want to ignore it. Now I've actually created my own recommendation because of all these issues. People will calculate their minimum and their solar charge controller will not turn on. So for a 48 volt system, I recommend most people calculate the VOC of your string to be higher than 220 volts. That way you'll get the best performance out of your system, even if it's morning or afternoon, or regardless of the temperature. If it gets too hot, the voltage will actually drop. So the best recommendation for a 48 volt battery system is a minimum voltage of 220 volts. And we're going to ignore the 100 or 130 or whatever it says in the manual. You want to boost it up to 220 volts. This will work best in most temperatures and you don't have to worry about the working voltage down here. So any panel you have, just get the voltage open circuit. And for this panel, it's 41.4 and then divide it by this 220 volts. The 220 divided by 41.4 is 5.3 panels. But we're gonna round this number up to six panels so we have the best performance possible. You really wanna get that voltage as high as possible and the minimum is very important for the performance of your system. So let's 
let's recommend that with these solar panels, you wanna have six solar panels in series. So six panels minimum. Now we're gonna calculate the maximum amount of solar panels you can connect in series for this solar charge controller. And the maximum MPPT voltage is 480 volts and you never want to exceed this or else your equipment will be damaged permanently. And this is a hard limit. You can never exceed this voltage. And this one is easier than the minimum. So all we do is divide this number by the VOC, 480 divided by 41.4, and that gives us 11.59 but you do not want to round this number up because this is a hard limit. So instead of 11.59, we're gonna say that you can only connect 11 panels in series. So 11 panels maximum. And for most people, this will work really well unless you have cold temperatures. And then this 11 panel maximum will actually have to be reduced. And we're gonna calculate that next. But for most environments, if it doesn't get that cold, this is perfect for you. Six to 11 panels. So you can have a seven, eight, nine, 10, or 11 panels in series, and it will satisfy the needs of the solar charge controller. Now, if you live in a very cold environment, you're gonna to have to use the temperature coefficient of the solar cell, and that will tell you the output for a given temperature. And for most panels, they're rated at STC, or standard test condition, at a specific temperature. And if you live in a cold location, these numbers might not work for you. So you're gonna to have to look up First off, your location, and you can use a solar reference map like this one, and I'll have it linked below, and you click on a location that's near to you, and you'll get the extreme minimum. So for this place, it's negative 17 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna use this number with a calculation provided by this website so that we can figure out the actual voltage that this solar panel can create at this temperature. So first we need the voltage open circuit, and then we need this number, the lowest possible temperature that these solar panels will see. And we wanna subtract this number from the standard test condition temperature rated on the data sheet of the solar panel. So if you look here under temperature coefficients, it says 45 degrees Celsius. We're gonna put 45 right there. So minimum right here and STC right here. And then we wanna multiply by the VOC coefficient, and this will also be found on the solar panel data sheet. And on the Aptos panel, it's negative 0.28%. We're gonna put that right there. And then we're gonna multiply this by the voltage open circuit, and then divide that by 100. So voltage open circuit coefficient and VOC divided by 100. And then it's just simple math. So this will be negative 62, and this is negative 1159 and then multiply these together, and that will be 7.18. Now this figure just needs to be added to the VOC. 41.4 added to 7.18, and you'll get 48.58. This is the maximum voltage at that temperature that these solar panels can actually create. And that's quite a bit more than 41 volts. So this is a very important calculation for cold environments. So let's erase all of this, and I'll have a link down below so you can actually see that equation so it's easy to follow. Now we can use this number to figure out how many panels we can safely connect to a 6000 XP. And like I said previously in the manual, it says 480 volts is the maximum. So we're gonna divide this by this new number, and that gives us 9.8, but because this is the maximum, we need to round this down. So the maximum we can connect is actually nine panels for this temperature. And with this number of panels, you will never destroy your equipment even when it's really cold outside. Because when it's really cold, this will bump up to this number. And that can actually destroy your equipment if you were to use 11 panels. Now look at our recommendation. We can only use six to nine panels at this temperature. And that's pretty limited, but you'll get the best performance and your system will last a very long time. So it is very limiting, especially if you have limited roof space or you have a 
weird racking configuration. If you have a ground mount, you don't have to worry about this. You can put nine panels together on the ground and be done with it. Now, if you live in a warm climate, you can absolutely bump this up to 11 panels and there's no issue, but you need to check on the map what your temperature is. Now, if you live in a very cold place and you're near the poles, you have to calculate that because the numbers can be pretty crazy. So please, if you live in a very cold environment, you need to do that calculation. Now, some systems do not have such a high voltage. So for the next example, we're gonna use an EcoFlow Delta Pro. And the max input voltage is 150 volts. But I found with these solar generators that are plug and play for beginners, there's more headroom because they know people are gonna make mistakes. But I wouldn't count on it. So let's say we have some Aptos solar panels and they have a voltage open circuit of 41.4. This voltage is so low that you're pretty limited and the max amount of panels you can connect is three. So three panels max. And that only gives us 124 volts, but you cannot exceed this voltage. Even though they have some headroom in this figure, do not exceed it under any circumstance. Now, what should the minimum amount of panels be? And it states 11 volts is the minimum. So you can actually connect any small panel to the EcoFlow Delta Pro. And they designed it that way for small systems. And you can use a 20 volt panel, a 24 volt panel, or a house panel, it does not matter. The EcoFlow Delta Pro Pro will deal with that lower voltage without issue. Also, each EcoFlow is different, so look up the spec sheet and do not go by this. If it says 150 volts on the label, then you can use this recommendation. But I want you guys to look it up on your own with your solar panels data sheet and the voltage open circuit. Now you'll notice if we put three panels together in series, how much power is that? And that will give us 1,110 watts but the EcoFlow Delta Pro is rated at 1600 watts. So sometimes it's very difficult to use random panels and to maximize the input capacity on this unit. So before you buy a panel, if you wanna max it out, you need to do these calculations and figure out if you can hit that 1600 watts. We can actually calculate that. So 1600 divided by four panels is 400 watts. So we need a 400 watt panel and 150 divided by four is 37.5. So if you find a panel with this voltage at that wattage, you'll be good to go. And if you look up the Aptos 400 watt solar panel, it has an open circuit voltage of 37.18 volts and that's below 37.5. So that would work perfectly. So instead of using 370 watt panels, the EcoFlow Delta Pro should be using four 400 watt panels together in series. And then you will not exceed the voltage open circuit rating on the input and you will not be exceeding the maximum input wattage. Now you might be wondering, why are we not covering current? So typically with the single series string system, the current is not an issue. The maximum input current rating is like 15 to 18 or 20 amps, right? Most of these panels in a single series string will only create at most 13 amps. But where amperage does matter is when you put them into parallel. So if you have parallel strings, please check out my other video where I go into depth of how to add overcurrent protection on each string and how to calculate that all out. But for a single series string, you don't need to. And that's pretty much it, pretty darn simple. If you follow those rules and you do those calculations, you'll be set. And remember, you only have to do the calculation once. So do it right the first time and you'll be good to go. Please let me know if you have any questions down below. And I also have a book for beginners. It's for 12 volt systems. I'm actually doing more information in these videos because I can crank out videos like crazy. But if you're an absolute beginner and you have no idea where to start or this video was confusing, please check out my book. I'll have a link below. If you also have any more problems with building your system, check out my forum. It's a message board with lots of engineers and myself, and we respond to all sorts of questions. So please check out the resources below, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.